What is up, guys? Pittsburgh White Schwartz back again. We're going to round out Bang Dream today with Blue. And uh, I got Andy and Zach with me on the call. So let's get to it. Um, Andy, get in there. start us off with you. Can I hear? Sure thing. Let's round it up, as you would say. All right, searching for answers. Yukina Minato, when she's placed on the stage from your hand, choose a Roselia character. She, uh, they get a thousand power for the turn, um, and she pay one rest herself, brainstorm for each climax. Search your deck for a Roselia character. So this seems like a auto include in any Roselia themed deck. This is just straight better than the Rinko, right? Like in every sense, which is only a three card brainstorm. Yeah, basically. Four guess, is more than three. Well, the other one has resonate support, but I guess you have you have new options to run like different things. I still think this is better. Plus a thousand on play is pretty good, especially because uh, there's a card later that gets a lot off um, that a thousand power. The uh, spoiler alert: they got a clean cut, but it's only a twenty five hundred clean cut that only targets uh, Roselia, I believe. That might be it wrong. This begs the question, though: Is this uh, is this actually better than Remy? Um, in Roselia I'm, decks. In a Roselia deck, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You think? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, especially. Your... I don't know. Mm, yeah, it definitely is because I would say it's worse on first deck, right? But like brainstorms aren't meant like hitting a brainstorm on first deck is sacking anyway. Yeah. Like. <laughs> This is a lot I mean, better I, I on definitely, second deck. I definitely like Search Brainstorm better than Salvage, but like they're roughly equivalent, I'd say. And like, I think it has good synergy with the Maguro, right? Because you mill through your first deck with the Maguro, and then you Brainstorm and you Search that deck rather than Salvaging from it. Like Remy like, with that. 500 a, I think 500 a turn is probably better than 1,000 oh. one time. I think the 1,000 is better in Mono Roselia, which is the only place you can run this card. Um... Effectively, rather, because of the clean cut that they got. Like, clean cut, playing a clean cut with your Brainstormer is, like, a really good play anyway. Um, and this just sort of, you know, makes it even better. It's, like, part of that. Just makes you want to do it. I guess the big kicker, though, too, is um, a lot of the Roselia cards that you're going to see are going to be, like, have effects like if you have two or more Roselia characters or... Like, the one event that's, like, if you have all the different character names yeah, on the field. Yeah, Phone Chai, yeah. Like, the fact that Yukina is Yukina, mm -hmm. says it in her name, is, like, kind of relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that event's, like, pretty good if you get the name thing to kick off. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like it's going to be impossible to get. Still, Because that like... one promo with all three of them on it, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't count for all three. It only counts for... One, you pick which one it counts for, but... It's also worth noting that, like, Mono Roselia is, like, totally just a real deck. Like, it literally has, like, enough tools to be an actual archetype in English meta. It definitely does. I remember totally losing to it. <laughs> like, in that was that just... V-Card Academy. <laughs> yeah, like, Mono Roselia is, like, literally just a thing that you can play. And you have two options for finishers now in Mono Roselia. You don't just have to play Bird Birdcage. I think, like, out of all the bands, Roselia probably has some of the most support if you wanted to do, like, a mono band deck. Not counting set one stuff for Pop and Party. Yeah, I agree, 100%. Um, but, like, I don't know. That's not really fair. I don't even know if that stuff's legal for JP Band League, but that's kind of beside the point. Like, set one stuff. Because it doesn't have, like, Pop and Party trade or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Are we ready to grade this? It's, like... I think Ugh. so. It's such a good brainstorm. It has such a good relevant effect, but it's only for Roselia. How does that... Yeah. Uh. I feel like it's so good, though, I have to say A-. minus. Just yeah, because... that's, that's kind of in that way, too. B+. Just, plus, just because, like, again, I do think Mono Roselia is literally just... that. That's a that's a meta Bang Dream deck. <laughs> they have so many good cards. Yeah, I, th I think B... I think it's, you know, would be A if it was... You know anything, but I agree, Zach. The the B because it's only for Roselia. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move to the next card. Oh so, boy! All right, I'll uh, read. Yeah, you go ahead, Zach. You can read it. Making cookies once more, Lisa Imai. 
uh, experience. If two specific cards are in your level, gains 2500 power. When this is based on the from hand, uh, look at three, take one. Uh, and when it attacks, you can pay one debt to Roselia and then uh, burn one. Pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, the experience is kind of nothing. Yeah. But, yeah, the others are pretty good. Yeah, I agree. I think if you're playing Mono Roselia, you're playing these two cards anyway. Um, yeah, in, in Mono Roselia, the experience, like, the other two cards are good enough to play anyway, so. It's not like, really whatever. The experience effect is going to kick in. And obviously, this card has additional implications. It gets restood by Aya in our favorite deck, Aya Lisa. Um, because so it's this the Aya Lisa deck is sort of another build your own America deck, kind of like the uh, the scanner deck in GGO, which is like bar bar blue gate. Um, they have like sort of a thing going on with eight gate pastel palettes, but this is the blue card that you stand. And every time you stand, you pay one Ditcher Azelia character, you get to ping, and then you can like put toilet on it. So when you attack, you get the plus. And every time you restand, because toilet doesn't have a limit because it's an old card, um, which like you know is pretty crazy. It's like a deck with a really crazy ceiling. Uh, it, it is a really cool deck. I I would definitely confirm that it's uh if you're looking for an interesting Bang Dream set to play this rotation, then um. The the Ayalisa deck is pretty cool, and it's not too expensive either. Like from a financial standpoint, I, I I don't like bringing that up all the time, but like comparatively, it's pretty cheap. Pastel Palettes engine decks have always been fairly cheap in English. Yeah, you still need the toilets though. Yeah, you only need two. <laughs> you only need I guess two. So, yeah. yeah, two or three. So, but yeah, this Rosmana Roselia can stand this card with the Rinko for pay three ditch two. So that's like your alternative option for yukina because like this doesn't technically require reverse it's just really bad if you swing this into an open lane unless like i don't know your opponent's out everything which can happen <laughs> i guess it's also relevant like even if you aren't restanding it just like as an off finisher burn one on attack is still like pretty good especially relevant as a top check and, three. like as a, as a top checker like a look at top three and then also has the utility of on on attack burn one also, if you're playing, it seems the... like it slots right into like just any Yuki in a top end deck. Yeah, help you find your uh, intense shout and also burns one if you need to. Yeah, it's like a good off card to like fill that space. It's probably straight up better than like you know the one of ta taught about a pair most people run in that. Probably just better to run this because it um, has. I mean, I would think so because this this helps replace some of your other weird dig cards that you need to run to help you hit the climax things like the the chibi ron and all the yeah all that stuff other like that. kind of bad cards that you need to run well i wouldn't call also, chibi ron bad a bad cards, card like, but you know kind of awkward cards you need to throw in your deck to make, make it all work make sure you hit your uh shout but yeah i think this card is like super solid i love that it's created like another playable archetype uh, in Bang Dream, and by playable I mean like a deck you don't feel bad pulling out when everybody else plays meta locals. Like you can pull out Ayalisa, and you know you might not win every game, but like it keeps up because it has such a ridiculous finisher and does some unique stuff. So yeah, Ayalisa is legit. I'm a I'm a big fan of this card. Yep. Yeah, a for Aya. A, a across the board. A for Aya. We do love Aya. I love Aya. Aya is my favorite. But yeah, the big thing for Roselia, though, like Mono Roselia, is that this doesn't require reverse. Uh, uh, Yukina does require reverse. So, all right, moving on. Let's so, do it. Moving on. So this is a promo. Um, this is the only non-waiting room anti-change counter that Bang Dream has ever got, uh, <laughs> and it is a twenty-five hundred. Pay three total and pitch a climax to bottom deck an early play. It's terrible. It's absolutely garbage. Wow. Hey, maybe if you're running that uh eight bar deck, you put this in there. Maybe. <laughs> maybe that's the only time, but still pay three. Uh, uh, I guess I, I guess, but like I don't know, an eight bar maybe it has a place. Well, considering that, would you still pay this for that effect? 
it is like a worse threat than the other two, which are both just waiting room ditch twos, which are actually so bad. Um, I think that the correct play when your opponent threatens it is to crash your early play first and let them burn three cards. <laughs> they're that bad. <laughs> yeah, they're not very good. I think it's li unless your opponent is Konosuba and they play a 1 0 where they have two unions in the back and they just plus up for two stock anyway, so it's effectively a two stock one card anti change. Um. Unless it's Konosuba, these Ditch 2 Waiting Room anti change suck. So, I don't know. This is notable that it's not that, even though it's a box topper. I still think it's bad, though. So, like, I don't know, like, D+. Plus? Like, yeah. Just because it's the only option that gets the plus, I guess. Yeah, it's the only option that's not Waiting Room. And, yeah, like you said, maybe 8-bar. Yeah, like, that's why I'm giving it enough. the C+. Because I think maybe, like, an 8-bar or, like, a, a build with a lot of blue gates or a lot of bars could actually utilizes pretty effectively mm -hmm. all right let's move on into the rares oh it's your girl secret spot aya uh i mean arissa yeah don't say Gigi Gigi Gaia. Like see i saw the aya at the end of the name that confused me um <laughs> what the hell does she do when this card is placed on stage from your hand you can pay one ditch one if you do look at up to three cards Choose a card from among them, put it into your hand, the rest go to waiting room. Yeah, so... Uh, I don't yeah. know how I feel about this. This is kind of like a Rize effect, but you have to pay for it. No, I. this is fucking... Dude, this is, you know... Chibi Ron, 12 bucks. Now what are they worth? A dollar? Two dollars? Oh, yeah, this <laughs> hey, is Chibi the green. It's Cosima, yeah. So it's the Cosima effect. Pay one, pitch one, top check three. Um, notably it's blue, so this doesn't, like, color fuck you if you're running, like, red-blue Bang Dream. Um, whereas, like, the Chibi Ron with this same effect, same stat line, but it's green. And Afterglow is probably what you'll see, like, Fever Mocha run. Uh, or stuff that's in green to fix. But, like, it's very notable that this card with a very important profile for that deck is now in blue, rather than being off-color. And it's fucking dirt cheap. As opposed to Chibi Rons, which are fucking ten to fifteen dollars, because they were box toppers. Yeah, I, I, this is kind of like what we were talking about earlier with the uh, making cookies, Lisa. Yeah, like maybe where it's like it, you get a look at the top three, but instead of playing a, a weird card like this, that's kind of maybe well, not what you want. You could you could just play an off finisher that does it for free. Yeah, like I think you still run one of these though, because they help you get into your climax for level one. Because they're zeros. Like, they help you dig for gate. Whether that's uh, Fever or, uh, you know, Fever Christmas or your book for uh, Crystal Song. One of those three. They help you get into your level one combo. So, they're still useful. And the fact not, that not a huge Not a huge fan of the pay one. but I mean, it's a powerful effect. Top check three, add anything. Also helps you get buns. Oh, I guess you can add anything. It's not restricting. Yeah. The big thing I use these cards for is to add buns, stuff like that. Dig for buns when I know I have two buns left in the deck. Fairly compressed. Grab one. Top three. Pretty consistent. Uh, not relying on stuff like Tanabata Pair. Like, this with Lisa is, like, off finisher in Yukina. Like, that's that's a lot of, like, dig power. Like, one and one. Because, like, the other one's also, like, an off burner, you know? You don't care about power, right? You just don't want to get your, like, you know, combo fucked over by, like, Seizure or something. So you still have to play around that, but, like, an extra pay one, burn one. It's pretty good. For only one stock. I couldn't get away with you squeezing me. What? <laughs> what is that context? What's the yeah, context for that, guys? I don't know. <laughs> this is still a good card. I'm going to give it a B plus. Um, yeah, I'm... B for me. Because I think that's the same thing I would give Chibi Ron. It's still a great card. Like, Cosmo's a good profile. It's important for your deck's consistency. Especially because, like, you don't have true Ricky effects in Bang Dream, so you, like, need to... You need to make sure you can set up for your level 1 combo as best you can. This kind of helps. Uh, helps. I guess. I mean, Ricky's X. plus. This doesn't really plus you. No, it just filters you for cards you couldn't grab otherwise. 
And Bang Dream wants to run a lot of events and a lot, needs to hit their level 1 climax combos to function. So, pretty good card. How ironic that an Arissa grabs Toilet. Yeah. Such good flavor, Bushy Road. I applaud you. All right, we done with that. All right, one? Zach. Next card. <clears throat> Tea time with the band. Akko. Uh, if you have two more Roselias, gets the thousand power. And on play, you can ditch a climax. Salvage so means a character. Climax ditch for blue. Yeah, I'm not. Not super pumped about the thousand power. I mean, it goes from fifteen to twenty-five. That's not. I mean, I'm pretty sure fantastic. the. I'm pretty sure the only other CX ditch is the promo cost me, which is just a 2k red with no other effect. So it's better than that in Mono Roselia. Well, the cost me is not a 2k ditch. That one's a. The, you mean the top? Yeah, it is. No, no, no. There's a just climax ditch salvage, cost me as well. I mean, I guess this is better than your Roselia decks, but I'm still not thrilled about it. I. I mean, it's climax fix that's blue. Compare I mean, this to totally board games playable. Mega Man. I mean, that's unfair. That card's broken. I mean, I guess, but, like, still, you gotta, like, consider it, like, 2,500's not, like, that impressive at level zero. It's not, but it's a climax. You're not, you're not almost an oversize. You're almost an undersize. That's what 2,500 is. <laughs> so there's no normal stat line. Almost small. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. no, I, I guess, no, actually, I'd consider 2,500 to be, like, an average sort of stat line for level zero. I just think Climax Fix is a totally fine thing to run as a one-of, and this just gives yep. you a color option, and it's a totally playable card. I'm going to give yep. it a B. Like, it's just, it's playable. A B for a one-of? Yeah. Climax that's, Ditch, dude. That's Barely niche, playable. dude. That's C. That's niche. No, it's Barely not. Climax, Climax Ditch is super important for some decks, and some people love these kinds of cards, and they, you know, confirmation bias, but, like, some people win games off this shit. Like, I mean, I, I guess, but, like, I still think it's, like, the it second effect, other than the climax, could be a... It's totally useful filter. A little bit better. Okay, think about it this way. And I, at least, I run one of these because it is a blue Roselia character that helps me filter and helps me set up for my very important level one combo. There are definitely reasons to one run this card as one of because of its traits, because it's Roselia, because it is a climax ditch. That yeah, a nice niche card. Oh, I think it's better than niche. I like these. Maybe it is like B minus. It's still better than niche though. It's a good card. I I don't want to like give off the impression I think it's bad. I just think it's like it's it's good in the specific decks where you it's want. It's definitely it. boring. I'm I'm not gonna say it's not boring, but it's good that more than one. Oh, look of at these that flavor text. We're wrapping this. the whole thing together. It's all, this is about making cookies too. They're all. She wants in cookies. on the cookie making, but they won't let her. No, this is the other side of the she's table. A this is the other side of the table. See, it's Lisa's hand over to the right there. They're all sitting at the you, same yeah, table. Yeah, you would know that that's Lisa's hand. Just fucking look at the fucking... You don't play the <laughs> game, do you? Uh, I do. I only played the uh, Hello Happy World <laughs> and uh, Pastel Palette storyline because those are the only bands I like. Didn't right. you watch the anime? That The anime's not real. All right, next card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who this? this is you. That? That was me? No, okay. Yep. I'll stay up this time. Chisato Shirasagi. So when you play this for the stage from your hand, you get to scry one, and it is a rest to salvage brainstorm. But it's a little different than a normal brainstorm because it flips the number of colors you have plus one from the top of your deck. So it's a five-card brainstorm with a scry on play. So potentially six-card brainstorm. Um, I have Eve on the slide because that's like... You know, there's all these kinds of cards that are like quote unquote reprints, or a, 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 this isn't really a reprint, but it is a alternative option in blue rather than yellow, allowing you to run different front rows. That's something they did in this set. It's not a straight reprint like the Aya is of the Eve, but uh, this is like functionally the same. I think it is a little better because the climax combo part of that card was useless. It well, I think I think it depends. I think it's like if if you run the climax combo, you of course run the Eve, but cause it's not it's not a bad climax. I mean, you give a character on reverse, look at four, and it's off of wind, which is nice. I guess it's worse but, than um, just running. If, if you're not running, if you're not running that combo, then I don't think I've ever seen any one of you guys play that uh, climax combo with well, all the because... all the power decks I've seen. Pastel, because of what its other colors were, you wanted to run Crystal Song usually along with it was the cheese because 
it was blue and your Chisato 7K walls were red. And then your back row was yellow and green. So that fulfilled your color identity. But now that you want to run Maya and stuff like that. If, you know, you're, if you're running red, yellow up front, then, and want to have like a, a more typical level one combo. Mm -hmm. I like this card a lot. Scrying super good. I love it. I'm biased because I play no game, no life, but I, I love the scry. I do think this is just objectively better than E. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think it's a better card in every way, especially because it runs with their the pastel palettes like Shiraha combo. I'm very biased towards that combo, but I I do think it's if you can run blue in the back row, no matter your pastel palettes build, I think this is better. Mill five is mill five with scry on play is like dumb. Six card brainstorm on its own, really stupid. Oh yeah, that is true. Yeah, like six it's card sick. brainstorm on its own is real good. Like because it's like basically pastel palettes only, I'm gonna give it a B double plus only because it's locked to pastel palettes. This is super mm. good. I think this is the pastel palettes brainstorm of choice over Eve, and I think it's so good that I would hazard to say it is so good in a pastel palettes deck that I would run it. I would choose a different level one combo. Like, I would choose a completely different combo to run this over the Eve, even if I wanted to run Wind. Like, I would change my well, whole deck for, to run first this. First of all, I don't think the Eve combo is worth it at one. I think it's like a viable option, but I think I'd rather have a plusing level one. Yeah, for but sure. But, like, I think they're like roughly equivalent if you're running a deck that wants to have yellow in the back. Like I, I wouldn't not if I had an idea for a deck that ran yellow in the back, I wouldn't. Well, it's scrap cool. it just because I don't get to run the. I'll leave it at this. Other it's brainstorm. Cool. It's cool that they both exist, even if I personally prefer this one because of like you know which combos I like. It's cool that there are this same effect like X colors plus one, one search, one salvage. Like it's cool that they're both here and you get to choose. Oh, this is Chisato up... salvage? Yeah, Chisato is salvage. Yes. Hmm. That's a demerit. I'm going to give it a B plus. Really? Uh, well, I like searching better. Yes. Yeah, so, B double so, plus. Right. Okay, put it this way. Milling, if you are brainstorming for five, there are more cards in your waiting room. So it's like not that's as like, bad. That's like one more card. Yeah. I mean, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm it, grasping it's here. Yeah, it's I, still a better salvage. It's the scry. It's the scry that makes it a better the scry brainstorm. Because like, if you're worried about getting A plus... In some way, this will plus you more consistently than the other one, because if you play it from hand, the turn you brainstorm, because True. it's grad one. So, lock the pastel palace, but still a good card. All right, next. Sharing something with yo. Sharing something with you, not yo. Wrong <laughs> idol show. Whoops. If your stock is two or less cards, she gets fifteen hundred power. Anyone she want is an oversize, a true bona fide oversize. Super Any, oversize. B for want big. An SP of I this? love it. Anybody want an SP? I got one. How much are they? If they're cheap, I might. I don't know. It's I like, do I love. Think it's, I think it's like fifteen or twenty bucks. Oh, uh, never mind then. See something like what how much you want to buy that? That's a cheap SP. <laughs> <laughs> for a, for a, I do like the I do like them big. It is a beer but, um, in blue in pastel palettes. More options. What, what were there? Well, okay. I guess I could say this is a 4K in blue, and that's why it's noticeable. Because Pastel Palettes cards never key off trait when they're on the field. They all key off color. And like, yeah, this I is like, guess this, this is super vanilla. You could put this in literally any bang. Yeah, bag. I guess this is searchable, quote unquote. But like, when are you searching an oversize at zero? Like, it's mm, searchable. Other thing, other thing too. Palettes. Other thing too. This competes with. I do like oversizes. Traditionally, like, 4Ks are sick, but this does compete with the Futaba. Yeah, Chisada's so dumb, and it's Which a Pastel like... Palettes card. Yeah, I mean, because of that, I'm going to give it a C+, just because Chisada exists. Like, Chisada's so dumb, she's a Pastel yeah, yeah, Palettes yeah. card. She's I, a... I usually don't like comparing cards, like, to other cards when I'm rating them, but... It's because it's in the same color, I... and the it's same It's the same color and same band. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, the big thing with Futaba, I mean, we say it all the time. The profile is an oversize. It's, a, it's still a card that has value later in the game, unlike other oversizes, because you don't have to marker the card. Something that other that people forget all the time 
You don't have to marker the card you top check. Which means it's like a really good shitter in the late game. Because you don't care about its power at that point anyway. Or it marker compresses you over refresh. Like, just so many uses. Markers are great. We love shitting in the late game. Yeah, we love shitting. Alright, next card. <laughs> this time I will, Sayo. Uh, when it on when it versus opponent, uh, clean cut. Clean cut Roselia only. Oh yeah, Roselia only. Yeah. So Noticeable that... fact about this card, ladies and gentlemen, is that it works off of the making cookies, Lisa. Before you need to have this card in your uh. Yeah. In your in your level, if you want to get the experience on the Lisa we mentioned earlier. And also, as we talked about when we were talking about the brainstorm, this kind of like. This card is kind of like telling you to play it with the Brainstorm on the same turn, and then cut the Brainstorm back. It's like hand-holding you into a disgusting level zero play, <laughs> instead of just like, you know, having you figure it out on your own. The Brainstorm Ooh, that, and this kind of go kinda together. Cool. Oh, wait, which, which Brainstorm? The, uh... the, the, oh, the one that gives a thousand power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it wants you to play this, then play the Brainstorm, make it an oversize, and then cut the Brainstorm to the back row. Like, kind of a, like, built-in package for Roselia. That's pretty cheeky. That being said, there's also the stupid bomb, like, in Roselia, the Sia bomb, which is, like, a really good turn one play because it just has pay one plus if it's the only thing on the field. It brings it back, and then you can bomb something else with it again and then cut it to the back row. Ooh, that, the level zero yeah. lineup in that deck sounds really nasty. Just yeah. Kind of like, uh, that'd be really easy to open with a good field. Yeah, if, yeah, you, like, if you're going first, you drop Sayo. If you're going second, you can drop this and the Brainstorm, or this and the Sayo. Yeah, there's just like... Bro, that's that's pretty like, sick. That's a big reason I think Roselia is like, you know, a notable deck. Like their zero lineup is like they have everything that's not a runner and that's fine. Like they have everything else. Uh or at least things like in the color, you know. It is locked to Roselia, but like clean cuts are good and a 2500 clean cut is good enough. I'm going to give it I I honestly think A minus. Like clean cuts super good. This is the only one Oh, well, it's not the only one Bang Dream has. I think they have a clean cut from set one, but it's like green. Uh, what? Is it for glitter green only or something? Maybe. I don't know. I, I remember somebody saying that there's a clean cut in green in original Bang Dream, but it's it's like locked in a stupid way. I I'm think. doing some snooping right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it exists. There's some sort of clean cut. Yeah, there is. Gentle Stir Yuri. When this card's battle opponent becomes reversed, choose one of your other green characters. Okay. So you so could run that in like an afterglow green. deck too. It's just green character. Green character. Okay. So like, still, I think clean cut super good. The Roselia deck is stronger than. So I know. mean, essentially, essentially, afterglow has a clean cut. Sort of, yeah. Oh, it's a zero, yeah. Yeah. yeah how, how big is it? Twenty five hundred as well. Twenty five. Yeah. Gentle okay. Stare Yuri. So you'd have to find a way to one. pump it, but I mean, like your afterglow, you have pump for free all the time um so yeah this is like similar very good nice catch carmen yep still a good i'm, I'm gonna leave it at a minus though i think clean cuts are really strong um they like help you punish players that are also playing level zero intelligently and they're no 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 so said that wrong they punish players that are playing zero intelligently, but they also, like, punish idiots just as well. Because you just leave nothing there. So, like, you don't get punished by somebody, like, tri-fielding or something like that. Because you cut to the back row. Good card. Next. Hey, it's this SP you pulled, Andy. Hey, does someone want to buy it? Please, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> Friends and family, you can trust me. Is this me? Yeah. All right, seeing rabbits tie, um, it goes to 7k when you attack. Uh, garbage. D. I hate these cards. Well, okay. I have a vested interest to, to sell my SP, so I'm going to give this card a uh, A+. Plus. It's like, uh, I guess... Uh, <laughs> no, no, no I, I, think, I think it's just Seriously, D. seriously, I'd probably give it like a C. 
Maybe my. I mean, I you can't really say this type of card's bad, but I mean, it hits seven k. It's the turn like play, uh, but... D plus, I guess. Like, it's Bang Dream. There's so many good options. There's there's no reason to run this. Like, even in a pop and party deck, you have so many better options at level one in blue. Like, why run this? And let ah, Thai wife, Thai wife, yeah. All right, here you go, Andy. This is you. Tears overflowing, Yukina. Oh no! If tears overflowing, Yukina is in your level, this card gets minus. Let's see. Okay, so if you have another copy of it in your level, she gets minus a level. Yeah. Uh, if all your characters are Roselia, this card gets two thousand power, and when you play her, heal. This is also an experience card for that uh, Lisa we were talking about at the beginning. Yeah, for it to gain power. I think this now, card's great. I really like it. The fact that it just incentivizes you to run four copies, it's not really, like, even a drawback. And it's, like, that's such an easy mode condition. It's, like, it doesn't matter what your deck state is at all. You Just, just had play to... four of this, and it's free. <laughs> you, you just have had a... to clock it at level one. Big an whoop. Early, yeah, an early, <laughs> play, an early play 10k with heal. Yeah, super that's good great. for extending the game. Buys you extra time to set up for... Probably Birdcage, honestly. Um, or, like, you know, Restander. It doesn't even matter. You just fucking... The, the requirement to early play this card is to run three or four of it. Like, nothing. Oh, and then, and then you need it also for the early play requirement for Cookies Lisa. It's not early play. It just gives it 2,500 power. It makes it yeah, a 10, five instead of an 8. <laughs> Rewind so, the video. That's what I said. Like, um, 10k heal said is too. fine. This is, like, this is like Saya, except it, it's even freer. To early play, you don't have to and have it's a field. Longer too. It's it's a ten k. Well, Sia well, sits, Sia sits a ten. Yeah, she's a nine. This is freer. Yeah, it's even freer to early play. Yeah, I agree, guys. Eh? Easy, easy, a. Eh? Easy. Wow, we're fucking flying, dude. Like these these blue cards are. I feel like it's the the Roselia deck so good. It's like easier to evaluate, kind of, because like it has like more. More, like, normal effects than the other bands. Not relying on, like, Alarm and stuff like that. It's, like, generally having good cards. Alright. Next. Determine Cry Zarenko. Uh, if you have two more other, other, two more other Roselias, it gets a thousand power. On play, draw two, ditch one. And Climax Combo with Blue Gate. Uh, at the end of this card's attack, uh, you can pay three, ditch two. If you do choose one of your other uh, characters, stand it and give it to and give that other character two thousand power. So there's an errata for this card. Um, Is that uh, you have to have a full, card you have to have a full field of Roselia. No, okay. it's not um, because we pull all these images um, after you know. Well, the set has oops. been out. Yeah, so the errata is already published. Um, that's, quite, that's quite a mistake. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> when when I thought that there wasn't going to be an errata for this, um, I was kind of like scrambling to come up with something that abused it. Because I noticed it like when I was pulling the cards for Encore decks. Um, you know, shameless plug, check out Encore decks, build all your decks, EncoreDecks.com. Uh, awesome. when, I, when I was pulling all the card text for Encore decks because I was pulling it from Bushi's like actual database, right? I noticed that this card did not have its trait restriction from JP. So, like, I was kind of scrambling to come up with something before anyone said anything. But, of course, Connor mentions it in the Discord. Um, and says, like, the same thing I was thinking was that 3-2 Ron from Afterglow would probably be the best thing to restand. Because it's pay one, mill three, burn for the number of alarms. Unfortunately, that deck will never see the light of day because the card got an errata the day before uh, Atlanta Regionals, so none of the erratas could be abused. It was very unfortunate, as I thought that deck would be really, really funny. That's like America on crack. <laughs> Pay one, burn two, like two and a half on average if you build your deck right. That's pretty stupid. Um, but no. But anyway, this is like the Yukina um, alternative... It doesn't require reverse because it's the end of its card attack. That part is correct on the card. Um, but it can only stand a Roselia character. So you stand the Cookies Lisa 
and it, you know, pay one, pitch a Roselia character, burns for one on attack. So, like, you get four instances of damage out of your Lisa, and this, and another lane. So, with one of these, it's six attacks. With two, it's seven. It's nine, right? Because Lisa pings, attacks, that's two. Rinko attacks, Lisa pings, attacks. Rinko attacks, Lisa pings, attacks, nine, right? So nine yeah. instances of damage if you can play out the wombo combo of two Rinkos and one Lisa, which is like super super stock intensive. But um, and if you're Mono Roselia, you don't have access to toilet, so that might be a little rough. But it's still a viable. What do you option. mean you don't have toilet? If you're Mono Roselia, you can have toilet. It's an event, dude. That is a pop and party card, Andy. <laughs> that has Arissa Ichigaya on it from Pop and Party. She plays the Can't keyboard. Can't play that in League. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you're playing a real event that matters, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could throw toilets in your Brazilian <laughs> deck. Yeah, so this is notably the same cost as Birdcage Diva. Um, is, do you think that's still expensive for a restander? Um, I think it's, it's average. Me like that. I think okay. it's literally average. So restanders that are more cost effective, <clears throat> I, uh, uh, are require a full field of all four colors. Um, so like, there's always some sort of trade off. I think pay three ditch two is like very very average. I mean, why wouldn't you just play <laughs> Birdcage Yukina? Because this does not require reverse, and lets you set up side attacks, which are really good with restanders. Because they build soul. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, they build soul as they attack, <laughs> so you can you can set up profitable oh, sides. So set so say you set have you know the top of your deck is a soul trigger. You attack with your Lisa first and side against the level three. You side for you burn for one side for one. You stand it back up side again. Burn for one side for one and a half, like on average, right? So like, how are you gonna have that much stock, dude? It's a lot of stock. I'm not saying it's not. But again, Without toilet. <laughs> at the end of this card's attack, very important. At the end of this yeah. card's attack is like the best possible condition for a card that restands another card, right? Is, is yeah. that like, yeah, because you get to build all the stock and you don't have to reverse. That, so that's what makes it under. does. It does have a lower overhead because it's at the end of this card's attack, which is like pretty good. Like in terms of a card that restands another card, this is this is pretty damn good, especially because it's draw two ditch one and the Lisa is top check three. So how do you whiff your climax or like a supporting card like toilet putting toilet on Lisa as she restands, as we learned tonight, is pretty dumb. <laughs> She just keeps plussing. And this card is ditched to any two cards. It doesn't have to be a Roselia character. So you can, like, hitting... Well, eight... you have to run this in a Roselia deck. You need the full field of Roselia characters. I still think this is a fine alternative to Yukina, though, because it's the same cost, but it doesn't require yeah. a reverse. So it's like... I, agree. I think it's a meta call. If you're running Mono Roselia, you don't have access to Saya, right? So maybe this is better if you're running Mono Roselia because you can't turn off backups with Bride for a day. If you don't have I mean, access I to guess. Bride... If you're playing Band League and you got to do what you got to do, then yeah. Yeah, I think this card, especially because it's on Blue Gate, like, and it has draw two ditch one on play, and it's going to go to 12-5 on Climax play, that's pretty good in terms of... Or 11-5. No, wait. Yeah, 11-5 on Climax play, that's pretty good. For a card that restands another card. And it gives power. It gives power to Lisa. That's pretty good. I didn't even notice that till now. It gives 2,000 power. Not that power means anything after you play this combo. Because <laughs> you're probably pushing all your chips to the edge of the table and you're standing up. You're all in at that point. If you're going to spend that much stock. Pretty much. I'm going to give it... Yeah, I agree with Zach. I'm going to give it a B plus. The fact that it's at the end of the attack and the Lisa is like pay one pitch a Roselia character, because that's obviously its intended target, right? I yeah. think that's like aggressive enough to compete with Yukina because this doesn't require reverse. I think that's big. At the end of attack and not requiring reverse on both sides of the combo is pretty good. Mm, I don't know. I disagree. I think, I think, I think it's close, but. This really competes with Yukina, and I think Yukina's the clear winner. 
in my book. I do like the draw two ditch one though. So yeah. I guess that's something. So it's like Yukina kind of stands on her own, but then need truly needs like Bride in the back, which means you have to have red to play it. This kind of lets you run mono blue. I guess that's another thing. Yeah, I mean, know. if you're if you're playing like a, a band league or something, it's probably more consistent than Yukina to get off because you don't have to worry about backups or your opponent clearing field. Yeah. This is just a, it's just a very good off -benefit. Less interactive, Plus, more stock yeah. intensive. It's your trade off. It's good that they have it. All right, let's move on. Andy, this is you. This is okay. Um, a real challenge. Lisa, Emi. All of your other music characters get 500 power. Oh, you... Carmen. I, I, yeah, you got it wrong. It's Carmen. No, well, I, I already go. Nice <laughs> yep. When this card's placed on the stage from your hand, put the top two cards of your deck into your waiting room. If there's a climax, choose one of your characters that get 1,500 power. Boring! Yeah, it's unfortunate that this is in the SPM pack. This has a foil, and I have one. It's like a 10 or $15 sign card. It's pretty atrocious. From a card pack. Like, uh, I almost want... Mm. Okay. That'd be a really that'd be a really pretty foil. That's some pretty dope art. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big but, fan. Um, I'm a big Lisa fan, but uh They're cutting off the best part of the art. Jeez. Um Yeah, no fee. Whoa. Jesus. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so the best part about this card is that it... <laughs> The best part about this card is that it mills two on play. Um, yeah. <laughs> mill 2 on play is fine. I'm going to give it a C- minus just because it is Roselia Mill 2 on a stick. Um, and that's about it. I don't yeah. think they have other on-demand mill like this on a zero. I They have top check, but I, I'm not sure. I'm sure I'll be corrected in the comments, but I think this is the only access, like zero mill 2 access they have currently. I, I I'm probably wrong. But whatever. In Mono Roselia, I think. Yeah, maybe a one of to just mill. Because, like, I don't know, when you're playing mixed, you're, you're probably playing red blue, honestly, in like some capacity, because you have to have Bride if you're playing Birdcage. So, like, when you're in red, you can just run a new start Saya because that card is stupid. Mill two on play, give power to anything, and then pay one, ditch one, salvage, and give it additional power. It's just a dumb card. This isn't as dumb as Saya. So. All right. Too fair. Too fair of a card. See yeah, too fair. Moving on. All right. Uh, I'll yeah, read this one. Yeah, uh, how did uh, this one? Uh, uh, hello? <laughs> Rinko Shirakane. <laughs> um, if you have two other music characters, it's a 2,500. And at the beginning of your opponent's draw phase, reveal the top card. And if that is a level one or higher, you return this card to your hand. I love coin flips. They are completely inconsistent, but I fucking love them. <laughs> Um, coin flips feel fucking gross when they go off. Um, they just leave Pretty your. Cool that it's on like a twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred is like average stat line. Yeah. The pop back effect's really busted too. It's no it Umi. It's no Umi. It's no Summer Pockets. But it's pretty good and it has strong art. Um, so for that, uh, I don't know. I really like these as much as I love them. Um, they are, like, horrifically inconsistent, and you're better off running some sort of runner. But this is in blue, so I guess you run it in Roselia because you don't have a better, like, dodge option because you just have bombs, right? Um, you just have bomb and clean cut, which is probably a better, like, line. Although if this does go off, like, this in the center, bomb on the left lane... Clean cut goes off. Clean cut cuts bomb. This pops to hand. You only have one thing on. Field I def. I think. Fielded. I think it's worth rolling the dice on an effect like that because yeah, the floor. So the floor on it is just like an average size card, but the ceiling is you completely fuck their combo over. I think in that scenario where you have bomb, clean cut, and this, when you whiff, it's no big deal because it is sitting at twenty five hundred. Like I was playing this in Mocha Fever, and when this is your opening play and it whiffs, it sucks. Because you just handed your Whoop. opponent a clean cut. Especially in English, where ReZero is popular right now. And Rem's running around. Sword Art is running around. Like, there's a lot of... this. You just handed them clean cut fodder. Um, which is... Which sucks. 
because uh, it's just a 1500 it gets reversed by everything even small clean cuts like 2500s so i don't know kind of got blasted for giving gushing back coin flips last time i'm gonna be smarter this time i'm gonna give it a c plus just because uh roselia is like i think the only band that doesn't have access to like a very quote-unquote evasive card to deny reverses because what hello happy has hogmi bomb that pops on climax play so that kind of quote-unquote works the way a runner would to deny climax combo Afterglow has Hemery, Poppin' Party has uh, Remy from set one. And, I mean, like, that's all the colors. That's all that matters. Uh, this is the only thing that's in blue that's, like, evasive in that way as a way to deny reverse. So, I'm just going to leave it at that. I do love the card, though. Big fan. Don't don't let my rating fool you. I'm just trying to be reserved. <laughs> Anything else for coin flip? We moving on. No, not really. All right. You we'll you just... said enough about it a while ago. All right. We'll uh we'll just start again with Andy. I'll just start over. Or all right. Ugh, seriously. Arisa Ichigaya. That Look at that dumb time. face. Hey, don't talk about Arisa like that. She's cool. I love Arisa. This card's placed on your stage from your hand. Look at two cards. She's. Hold on. I gotta start over. Ugh, seriously, Arisa Ichigaya. When this card's placed on stage from your hand, look it up to two cards from the top of your deck. Choose up to two music characters from among them. Reveal them to your opponent. Put them under this card as, as markers. markers. And put the rest in your waiting room. Um, then you can send two markers from underneath her away. Choose one of your opponent's characters that's level zero or below. Return it to his or her hand. This card gets 4,500 power. It's just so weird. So it's like, like you, you, you like... Do an effect, but you bank it and you do it later, assuming the card survives. Well, you have to high roll to hit it. What? Yeah, like, <laughs> you have to high roll to hit it, and then she does shoot up to seventy five. Bouncing a zero to your opponent's hand is like almost always worthless, right? At least in English, <laughs> pretty much. Like unless it's something. Ah, uh, like what's the, what's the. Th payoff here like we don't have you shit open like, lane, i guess we don't have shit like kaban in english where like yeah. you don't it's this thing that you don't want to hit because it turns off all your pings or something like that like we don't have a like these things Ugh, i guess we have we're getting on reverse rizes you don't want to let people rize um still when, though i don't know it is basically gur and logan though you do get Double marker compression, potential. Yeah, pot I think that's the that's an interesting point. I think that the coolest part about this card is that it can potentially marker two cards. Over also, refresh. can filter climaxes off the top of your deck if you know they're there. So if you're running other Arisa cards that will like top check for you, you can be like, oh, there's a climax, and fucking get rid of it with this. But if you were running a card to do that, and you had another card, presumably we're talking about top check Arisa here. Bonsai Arisa. Um, why would you run this over, again, we keep talking about it, a new start Saya, who when you mill a climax, gives 1500 power somewhere this for free, and is also a drop salvager. This just doesn't do enough. The coolest part is that it can double marker over refresh, which is, like, more destructive than you would think at creating stupid compression states. <clears throat> Robots! Like... <laughs> Like, getting hit by the robot's compression machine sucks, and that's the funny... That's, like, the coolest part about this card, but it's too inconsistent. You have to high roll to hit it. In Bang Dream, where you want to run events. Like, it just seems bad, man. Seems real bad. And the payoff sucks, too. Yeah. It, it, complete agreement, Zach. Complete agreement. <sighs> Spring Sparkers looked bad. Yeah. Anything, Andy? Andy? I think we lost him. He's lost in thought. Andy. I can cut this out. Andy. Let me add him in chat. He might have gotten a call or something. It's no big deal. 
All right. I can always just cut stuff out. I'm going to use this opportunity to run to the bathroom. I'll be right back. All right. What happened? Uh, we were waiting for you. You went away. Yeah, I did. Uh, I was taking care of my bonsai plants. Uh, D plus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Carmen used the opportunity to run a rest restroom. We'll resume after that. He's going to cut this all out. Yeah, that was my. Uh, I thought you guys would be shit talking Arissa for longer. I had. I couldn't wait. I had to. All right. <laughs> so this is going pretty pretty fast for the most part. Yeah. I think I think three people is a good good call. There, there, are, more, there are more blue cards than I thought there'd be. Yeah, there's Resilient. a lot of them because they have to fit yeah. all the pastel palettes and Rosalia cards into that. We can get progress though. And pop and party because our pop and party is like red blue. You're gonna be at Heroes tomorrow, right, man? Yep. Uh, what are you playing tomorrow? Are you playing serious shit or? Uh, not sure yet. Depends on if other people are playing serious shit. I think I heard that Brian's playing Kunisuba, so I might play AOT depending on what other people are playing. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to test out my no game no life bruise some more, but I might um, I don't know. I'm either gonna if I can get this. I feel like I'm on the right track with this one. This feels like the winner, Zach. Accelerate seems good in that list. Seems but, to fix um, your problems. I guess kind of, yeah. yeah delete so I'm, your I'm kind score. of pumped about that. Delete your score huh? and we'll count you in. And then just immediately give your final thoughts on the card and give your score. So delete your score. And I'm going to count uh, you in. I'm trying to find our spot. Arisa. 81. 81. So delete your score, and I'm going to okay. count you in. I'm going to give you a 3-2 silent, then go, and then just immediately give your final thoughts on the card, and then put your thing, and I'll cut it up, and I'll be fine. So 3-2. Okay. B+, plus, Arissa's the best. Next card. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. <laughs> The coolest in the world, Akko Odegata. If you have two more of the Rosilius, just 3k. Uh, when it's played on play the stage, be a top card. If it's several two or higher, put it into your stock. This yeah. is the card I was talking about before. The uh, the uh, 106k that uh, blind stalks you. Yeah, so this is like... This is the one I had to read the translation for. <laughs> the one where I'm like, no way that card's that yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> this is like a 106k cross turn for nothing that might give you free stock. Pretty fucking good. This is like a godsend for the Mono Roselia deck that wants to run any of these top end combos since they're so stock intensive. I this, think... is like a, this is like a major payoff card for yeah. Mono Roselia, honestly. I don't know. It's almost... Ugh, no, no, it's not. No. Because the buns, because toilet exists, I can never say a card that you play that gives you free stock is fine because toilet exists in this fucking. Wow, deck. you know what you could put in a deck with this toilet? It's true. You could put this cards. This... this card's really, really good, actually. Yeah, like Andy said, major payoff card for playing Mono Roselia. Um, I'm gonna give it an A minus only because it is best in Mono Roselia, but. You have you have so many top check confirms in Bang Dream if you're running this on a mixed list and having two other Roselia characters on the field is also not that bad of a like cost, quote unquote, to be six K cross turn. The fact that it's six K cross turn, that's if so you stupid. could you could literally just if you're playing a mixed band deck, just run Crystal Song combo at level one. Boom. There's yeah, your and this Roselia is your characters. third lane. Your third lane that you can set up in a way that gives you Free stock because you have stuff like Arissa Bonsai top check. Just like you see, oh, it's a level two. It's fucking free stock. It's kind of like Hemery in a way, like the Hemery anti change bomb. It's not as stupid because the Hemery anti change bomb is fucking dumb. 
But this is still pretty good. It's on that same sort of line, right? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, just like rip free stock off the top of your deck. Uh, given some condition. It's not as dumb as Hemery, but it's still pretty good. Major payoff card for Mono Rosalia. Alright. Next. This is me, right? Uh, yep. No way except forward. Tai Hanazano. Uh, so it is a level 3 2k assist in front. And it has, uh, when you play this card, you can pay one. If you do, top check. And if it's a level two or higher, you get to salvage a Climax. This well, is the only Climax salvage that exists in Bang Dream currently, as far as I know. It's uh, free, too. It's like... They have Climax I've, I've seen effects like this before, but usually they're like, ditch a Climax, then get one back. This yeah, is literally... This makes you Pay one level. plus... If you're running the Arissa, especially on a pop and party list, because the Arissa's pop and party, you can just top check until you see a two, and then just get your climax. That's pretty powerful. You know it what is, also synergizes with it? It is a two this? one. What what is it? Fucking stock soul. Pay one and grab your stock soul. Play it. Get your stock back. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's free real estate. It is free real estate. You got to play it, but the stock soul's free. We love Tim and Eric. I really, um, I really like this actually. Like, yeah, it is kind of high roll, but like you in, have in some stock soul decide. builds. This is great in standby builds, which is probably what they're going for with the um. Well, Bang Dream Pop and Party as a standby sub theme. Yeah, it's like. So I think the way this card is intended to be played is behind the new three two Saya. Um. But that 3-2 Saya also draw two ditches to on play, which should get you into their climax. This is like a backup plan. Um, I guess. However, it is notable that it's a 2k assist to level 3s, which um, I don't think Bang Dream has many of. They do have a lot of wonky assists. Like, they have the uh, set 1 Arissa assist that, like, markers toilet that's like a global level assist. Um, but, like, they don't have a lot of these 2k, level 3 or higher's. The thing, though, is, like, you don't see a ton of board-based Bang Dream decks. You don't, yeah. Like, and you said, like, salvage a standby, right? I think Bang yeah. Dream is very unique in English right now as a standby deck that does not want to play standby in hand. Like, they don't want to play standby from hand like the other big standby decks in English do, like Sal, uh, where Sal has like the uh, what is it, the silica that pops to your hand and pluses. Maybe you. a Moggy to work off it too, and all that. Yeah, stuff. it's like Bang Dream doesn't have those kinds of effects. Well, they do. They have that three two <laughs> cost the new one, but it sucks. But like in reality, they they don't have these kinds of effects. So like salvaging a standby isn't as good. I do think this is cool as just a blue, like top check get a Does climax bang? if you can confirm it. If you can confirm it. If you can't confirm it, it's just a level three two K assist in front, which is like fine if you're in a board still fine. deck. Still yeah. still a still a fine standby target. It's like totally okay. Um if you're in blue and like you need some sort of pump. I just don't think that salvaging standby, like even from where this card is coming from as a pop party card is like very worthwhile uh, in, in bang dream specifically. Cause I think what bang dream wants to do is like twin drop play eight standby and twin drive with the new Kokoro every fucking turn and just like fish to trigger standby over and over and over again. And that's how they gain value by just like flooding the board with garbage. As opposed to other standby decks where, like, Silica, you play it from hand, you get to Amagi, you get to pop the Silica to hand. Uh, what other decks are playing standby from hand? You got uh, No Game, No Life, which has pay one stand. Um, we have Bunny Girl coming, which is going to have the Kaide combo. Like, Bang Dream just kind of wants to trigger it as often as possible. And do stupid stuff with it. Because they can stand by out that 2-1 Orisa, where when it gets front attacked, you just change into swimsuit swimsuit Arisa. oh yeah that's so clever. like like really you want to trigger it because like putting that out on the board even if you quote unquote minus is like stupid because that card you're getting a level three at level one maybe yeah yeah so it just reads like your opponent cannot risk front attacking this card or they might lose 
if they don't like if they're, Batman Ninja all over if, again. If they're not fucking Konosuba and don't have access to a one oh anti change with free condition. Fuck Konosuba. Um uh, but yeah, this card's fine. It, it's like I want to give it a C plus. It's definitely niche in the deck you run it in because it needs to run support with it. You need to run top check support, notably the Bonsai Arissa uh, on play, like just look at the top card, stuff like that. Um, there's also stuff like that in yellow, I think. There's a cannon for multi lab that also checks top card, um, but only when you play yellow characters, so whatever. But I think it's totally fine. I think this card's a lot better than you guys think. <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with deck building with this. You can salvage standbys to your hand. You can get free stock souls. Uh, 2k power to the front's already really good, like, on its own. You can set this up. This is pretty cool. Like, actually plus is a card to your hand, unlike a lot of other cards with this effect that make you pay one, discard a climax salvage a climax it's just pay one gets you a climax if you set it up yeah it is definitely yeah. super interesting like i think there's like a, a lot of stuff you could do with this card really aggressive climax salvage card just needs other cards to support it very aggressive though i like it all right moving on next card dense cookies sayo hikawa what what does that, that even mean? That's a glass. That's those are cookies. I don't see any cookies. Yeah, they're so dense. They're like glass. These cookies <laughs> taste like glass. This card gets 500 power for each of your other music characters. The beginning of your encore step of you making cookies in your climax area, and this is in your center stage. And your opponent does not have any characters on his or her center stage. So if you joke or reverse them, you fever. And fever is search your deck for a character. Put it in your hand. Choose a music character in your waiting room. Put it in your stock. Choose one of your other characters. They get a thousand power till the end of your opponent's turn. So I've done a lot of messing around with this card. Um, the Shizu Cats posted a thing a while ago about like his hybrid, like Hello Happy Sio Fever deck, and I've been messing around with it in English uh, since the set came out. And I have to say, this is a little underwhelming in english i think because of how aggressive the format is because the strength of this card right is you hit level two you're ready to go you play two or three of these and you rip damage out of your deck every single turn while generating three free stock to play a free fresh counter with so like you enter this loop where you are clock drawing into this every turn or dr just straight drawing into it or getting it some other way, ripping damage out of your deck, giving yourself three stock to play the Arisa free fresh counter with and repeating the process. And like he went as far as to like run that uh, Tomoe back row from multi lab that's just a pay to rest this heal one on a zero. And like it ran like this really crazy sustain game. And so far in my testing against English decks, I've only gotten that like really like crazy sustain strategy. I've like held out at level two really hard, like maybe twice in like fourteen games. I want to say fourteen, fifteen. I'll just games. send me that list. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah, it's really fun. It's really interesting, and I think this card conceptually to stall you at two, even in the English meta, because it's not an early play, right? It's a two one. So, like, your opponent doesn't have a great way to answer this other than beating over it. And if you climb, if you fever, it's 10k. That's fine. You have ways to buff and bang dream. But it's like, it, it, it has interesting implications. But it seems really hard to get off consistently. The, the big feather in its cap is as a level 2 combo. It's very strong. And bang dream has multiple, like, double climax combos at 1 and 3. Is this a is this double with something making cookies? No, is there another so half of this. Making cookies isn't a double combo, but like um, magic of smile and uh, that is how I roll. Other bands have double combos, so you kind of put this in a deck alongside a one three double combo. Ooh, is that's the idea. Sick. I like that. Yeah, so that's clever. Hello, happy works the best. It's just that. Because you're not running, like, twin drive insanity. I mean, well, you still are, but it's like you're running more pieces, so it's a more intricate deck to set up. I mean, uh, if if any of you guys are interested, uh, Shizu Cats does have a video about it on his channel. 
Um, so you can go and check that out. Like he has a whole deck tech about it and like like thoughts from other people like piloting in the deck. It's like a very in-depth video. It's for the JP format, not English, but a lot of the same stuff still applies. Um, it's just in English with how aggressive the format is, despite how strong this card is at like stabilizing because it is ripping three damage out of your deck every turn if you try a field. It is setting up for you to play free fresh counter um, and getting free fresh counter from your deck, right? Because free fresh, when you play it, goes back into your deck so you can get it the next turn so long as you get book. So, like, you just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. But since English is so much more of an aggressive format where there isn't as much, like, standby and garbage running around, it's really hard to, like, execute this stall strategy effectively in my experience like i might just be doing it wrong i know the list is difficult to play it's very intricate i'm still learning like how to play it but that's just like my general thoughts on the card right now i think it has a lot of potential it's very powerful it creates a very strong feedback loop to stall the game but like english is so dumb like this card alone is so bad against konosuba i think i lost to brandon's list like six out of seven times i only beat him once like because it's walling up so hard and leaving bodies i just left him shit to fucking clock kick and it just felt bad because you can't generate any advantage against like a konosuba heavy meta with this card like i canceled yeah but then what did i do after it like i don't know burn for too much because he was too compressed because konosuba's easy mode like you know what can i you feel do? like this would be all right against konosuba because it gets pretty big, but... Not big enough. Not, I don't know. Well, it does fine against their early plays. Um, it loses to, you know, their end game basically. Anyway, scoring time. Uh, I like this card. I think it's super sick. I'd give it, like, a B plus. I, I really think it'd be fun to build with this with a, a double combo, like you were saying. I'll have to do some research and development there. It's definitely a fun card. I'm going to give it a B just based on my experience so far. Uh, I really like it. I really want to make it work. I hope it is just me not being an adequate pilot at the list yet and that I can make it work. But in English, it seems really hard to abuse the, like I said, the the nature of the card, which is to like stabilize and like play free fresh a lot and like never die and over compress. It's like really hard to execute that in English because there's so much wind and Konosuba existing, which don't care about anything. They just care that you have shit on the board to kill kill you with. Cool. Is that it? Alright. Sure is. Move on. Seri serious Mind Eve. All your other uh, first time Latte or Ayas, uh, get 500 power and uh, character encore in a bond that uh, first time Latte or Aya, which is a level 2 vanilla. Oh, so that card I gave an F to last time still sucks. <laughs> you give I an F? Come on, man. I did, my girl, but I mean, she's so bad, I couldn't help it. I mean, a 219k character you on to. Yeah, it's still bad. <laughs> the... <laughs> yeah, it's still bad. <laughs> two cards, two bad cards. This, this Eve card has very strong art. We should tell Ivy about this card. This is, uh,. This is, a, this is a very strong Eve waifu card. That is, uh, she has an E on her shirt. She does Eve. have an E. E for Eve. And she has, look, she has the, like, katana in the back, dude. She's ready to go. She's got her She has her dough. katana. Holy she fuck. She always right. does. <laughs> <laughs> dude, in the show, she has a katana-handled umbrella. <laughs> that's actually pretty that's dude, badass, Dude, e Eve's actually. metal as fuck, yeah. She's, she's out there with her sword. All right, let's move on. Uh, so this is me. My first pair of cat ears, uh, Yukina Minato. Um, oh my God, if you don't have any other Roselia characters, you can't stand this shit. And when you play this card from your hand, reveal top. If it's a climax, you just throw this card in stock. Um, so these kinds of cards have scarred me for life. For when Drew was playing Animal Alien to Lover against me, and he sent three of these to stock on turn zero. Um, I was incapable of killing him that game because he became so compressed um, because he said, all right, I have all the stock. I'm just going to mill myself out now. Um, I became incapable of killing him, and that game went on for like 
45 minutes um, <laughs> where I eventually lost. Um, so, yeah, these cards have scarred me for life, um, but are they're bad oversizes. Uh, it, it's got really cute art. Uh, she's got a fang, but not but isn't viable for Fangtooth Tribal. Uh, this is so like also a negative. waifu card. <laughs> yeah, it's a Yukino waifu card. It's like fine. I, Ro, Blue has it's... better options for oversize in general. Um, Roselia has the clean cut, which I don't think like I don't think you run an oversize if you're running clean cut and bomb. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna, just gonna give it a D. I'm gonna give it a yeah. D minus because it scarred me for life. But this doesn't even fit like Yukina's character profile. You know what I mean? There are she's implications. Supposed be, she's when... supposed to be like the serious badass one. She would never wear a tutu and cat ears. Well, okay. So there are interesting implications of this card. Like we're kind of knee jerk giving it bad, but it's like okay, here's here's me just talking about you, this fictional character. Like I personally know. If her. you if you top check, she would you, never do that, Carmen. Never. If you see a top check and you see a zero, this is just pay play it, give it, play this card, get free stock. But also there's also the but Akko. also mine is. <laughs> yeah, it, there's also the Akko, which on play does not kill itself. <laughs> and uh, if you see a level 2 or higher, it gives you free stock. So yeah, this card sucks. Moving on. Ooh, bunny strategy based on the zone. <laughs> this card is frontal attack. Put it in your waiting room. Ooh. This is very interesting. You read this card initially and like go, oh, that's dumb. But... This card just says I'm a forty five hundred for zero and I don't you don't get a reverse. Yeah, why not just play Hogami though? Um Yeah, for yeah. climax combos, Hogami is objectively better. What and what we mean is the Hogami bomb from set one, Girls Man Party. When your opponent plays a climax, it goes to stock and it's also a level zero stock bomb. Look um, at that rabbit, it's fucking huge. Yeah, that's a massive rabbit. Because Ty is not that small. She's a tall girl. If you've ever seen this show, she's she's got some height on her. That is a big rabbit. That's a fat ass rabbit. That's a chonky <laughs> chonky boy. That's a chonker. Oh boy, he coming. That's what that is. Coco the wise cat? No. No, come on. That's too mean. He needs a diet. We love though. Coco. Yeah, Coco the wise cat needs a diet. We still love him. But <laughs> Yeah, starting fights with other YouTubers. That's a great way to <laughs> That's a great way to get known um yeah i don't know this is interesting <laughs> but like uh, again if you're in blue in general and you want a card like this there's a 4k Akko that just murders itself when your opponent levels up yeah. so or when you level up right so when uh when you level up it does bang dream is such a large set that you literally have other options for 4k plus kill themselves <laughs> <laughs> so this is bad <laughs> Why would you play this over 20 Rabbits, Tay? Also goes in the Rabbit deck. Because other people didn't go to Chara Expo, Andy. And yeah, neither did price. I, but it's called TCG Player, homie. I guess, yeah. Oh, update on the TCG Player front. Uh, Half of my mochas did get cancelled, but the other half are still shipping. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... I, well, I cancelled the order, like, right away, and, like... <laughs> like, literally, like, two, five minutes later, I cancelled the order after I put it up. And then, like, three days later, they ship it to me, and they send me an email like, Oh, sorry, we didn't see it. You're, we didn't. We already sent it out. If you, you'll have to send it back to us if you want your money back. It's like, you didn't fucking see it? You had three days. All right. <laughs> Next. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Who's this? Is this Zach? I think it's me, yeah. yeah. Uh, pay one clock, cell phone, on play, uh, salvage... This two one vanilla and put it on stage, or you can bond with it. Okay, so it lets you Footage. early. It lets you early play. So you have to bond to it by ditching one. So overall, the cost is have this in your hand, have this two one in your waiting room, ditch a card, then pay one, clock yourself one. So you exchange a card in your hand for playing this two one to the field. Yes. You just pay one. You pay one and clock yourself to early play this eight five. 
Well, you have to have it in your hand. It bonds to it on play. All right, you you it, bonding's basically getting it for free. That you yeah, I'm saying turn the, another card into this. Yeah, I'm saying the whole interaction is pay one, ditch a card, clock yourself one. So you play both of these at the same time. You're getting one big character and one shitty twenty five hundred level one that's garbage. I mean, in terms of a like budget interaction, this is fine. The Ricky cost is like objectively good. It's because it's a pay one plus. The fact that this has to bond to it, but it doesn't have to bond. It's what do you like... mean? It's not. It's not a pay one plus. What? Well, mm. You pay one, and then you get to just. Oh yeah, that's right. The bond the is what gets it into your hand. Yeah, never mind. It's just a Ricky cost. I mean, effectively, I think, this is I pay think one. It's bad. If you're a budget know. player, you can do better. Yeah, I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm gonna give it a D plus. I think like it's a f cool way to play a. Two one at one for a budget player, I guess. But like, I don't know. All the cards from the set that aren't double rares are fucking cheap as hell. Dude, Weiss is already a budget ass fucking game. If you want it to be, look at look at this set. Let's cut back a couple slides. You know, you oh, you don't want to pay forty dollars each for Yukinos. Boom, Rinkos. She's probably like three bucks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's options, especially in Bang Dream. There's a ton of options. How much is she right now? Wow. Um, well, I don't want to talk about price. I should get down she, off my soapbox. She's a buck fifty on um a site that will not be named with poor, really bad CSS. You know who you are. Um, anyway, next card. Uh, is this me? Yeah. Uh, protective gaze, Yukino Minato. All right, we got an interesting card. So if the three two early play is in your level, which you want to do at one anyway, by the way, um. It gets 1,500 power, so it's a 6k cross turn. And when you attack, as long as you have two other music characters, or Roselia characters, you get to choose your trigger. Um, so choose your trigger is a not very often seen, extremely powerful effect. Um, and the fact that this is a 6k cross turn, what's the one we just recently got? Oh. Uh, sniffing? Rem sniffing her clothes. Yeah. And sniffing super is clothes. clothes and that's a 7k on attack i think 6k cross turn is objectively better and this is a non oh, cost yeah. because if you're running this tears overflowing you're clocking it at one anyway to ensure that it's your level two level right um, does, it, does either one of you know about the roselia lore is there yeah. like is there like some oh no, wait never mind traumatic moment when like you can uh like comes to some realization like starts no crying idea. and then like they turn the band around or something. Sure. Anyway. Because, like, so Tears Overflowing in experience is, like, a major theme I'm noticing so, here. I was mistaken. Tears Overflowing, you need to clock at level zero if you're going to run this card. But I think that's fine. So if, if I was playing this Mono Roselli deck and I opened a Tears Overflowing, I'd keep it. Because, this like, I think this is a super big payoff card for that. Choose your trigger 6k for nothing. That's that's really fucking good. Really dumb. Really, really. So dumb. you already have like eight copies of one zero six Ks in your deck, then. Yeah. Because what's like the rest of your, what's the rest of your level one lineup? Do you even run a level one con? Yeah, you do. You still run uh, Crystal Song or no? I think I think you run it this way. I think you run four Crystal Song, three of this, two Akko. Maybe three Akko, depending on how aggressive you are. See the thing. The thing. I there's diminishing returns. That's the problem I'm running into. Is like, how many how many one zero six Ks do you really want? So, sure, this card's great, and so is that other card. But like, I'm gonna say a thing you're not that running you four hate. of each. I'm gonna say something you hate. In summer okay. pockets. Um, oh my god, I hate it. <laughs> when you're, they have like a top check too on a stick. Um, and you only run two of it, and I think that's fine. I think this is good enough to run three of it. Um, but again, I think it's like just these cards are best as that level one fill, right? And a six K yeah. with a such a good effect. Um, I don't know. I mean, like this a two two split with Akko is like totally fine. I guess, but. The Again, fact that there's it's a lot of one zero six K that's slots. already so good in the set. I'm not saying it's a lot not a lot of slots. I'm saying that I think that this look at two choose your trigger is just as strong as the free stock, like effectively. 
Yeah, I like, mean, I'd still say the card's good, you know? It's still, like, an A-tier card, IMO, but... I wouldn't say it's A just because of its know. requirements. I, I think it's B. Like, those are two very steep requirements. You have to be an all Roselia deck. You have to uh -oh. be running this early play. Yeah. Um, because this early play is, like, a 3-2-8-K two, a two, healer. To for... 3 2 10 k healer. Well, if you're not in Roselia, all your characters have to be Roselia. Okay, well, you're only running her in Roselia, so... No, that's why Good That's point. why I'm giving it a B. That's why I'm giving it a B. Otherwise, like, if it didn't have one of these restrictions and was more splashable, I'd be a lot more about it. Because I do think Choose Your Trigger's dumb as fuck. Like, that's literally cheating. Again, like, all these effects, like Scry... Everybody says, like, oh, Scry's cheating at Weiss. Well, choose your trigger is, like, double cheating. Because you get to look at two. And pick one. And if it's a, like, Climax, you get to mill it. If it's not something you want to trigger. Or you get choose to trigger it. It's broken. It's very good. Alright, next. Quietly worrying. Rinko Shirogane. This is a one-cost 2,500 backup. I hate it. I don't. So, there was a point where I was looking for a 1-1 one, one, 2500 backup that existed in the set with a soul trigger on it for a very stupid build, and it didn't exist until now. And because of that, D+. <laughs> no, that is a good point. I do remember it, that. It exists. <laughs> I was like, is there literally anything in blue to fulfill these conditions? And I was like, of course it exists in JP, but not now. Um, but now it does, so I can go do that dumb thing. Um, Are you actually going to go do it, though? Probably not. I have more. Standby <laughs> smiles. Toronto's in like a week, dude. <laughs> um, which, by the way, we're going to be at Toronto. So if you guys are going to be at Toronto, come and like hit us up, and we'll... I don't know. We'll fucking take a picture or something. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you Come guys want to do. With us. Yeah, please. <laughs> I'm drinking at our Airbnb <laughs> party. Yeah, in Toronto. Par party in Toronto. <laughs> Hit oh us up. Goodness. Hit us up. Seriously. No, no, no. Seriously. Hit us up. We're gonna be at Toronto. Um, you know, as you watch our channel, please hit us up in Toronto. We are gonna be there. All right. We ready to move on? Yeah. Boring. I'm ready to move on. All right. Arissa and Wonderland, Arissa. All your other we'll definitely take it, Arissa's and Remy's precious Re Remy's precious Remy. You should got me get five hundred power and uh level three assist for two thousand. So this is the trial deck finisher from multi. First off double rainbow. Yeah, double rainbow, which is a gate, right? Yeah, it's a gate. Yeah, I, I this is just like a desperate attempt to make a trial deck combo relevant. Um and it fails. I'll give this a big big fail. Um What does the combo actually do? Hold on. Uh it is like on reverse ping one on both of them. And uh it's like a three. She's one of your other characters that character gets twenty. So here's how it works game. out. You play the Orissa, you pay one, summon the Remy, uh, from waiting room. So for three stock you get two level threes, and then when you play the climax, they both go to thirteen five on climax play. So they get twenty five hundred, and then on reverse they deal one. So this sends them to fourteen five fifteen. So it sends them to 15 for an additional stock. Not bad. It's like Yeah, that's actually not that bad. That's super efficient. I don't think it's good enough. I don't think power matters Probably enough not. past 135 like so whatever. They still burn one. You're guaranteeing your reverse free burn one twice. Uh, guarantee. That's actually not bad, dude. Guaranteeing is a strong word, especially in English, where AOT exists and Goblin Slayer bounce. Will Dude, have you ever listened to Double Rainbow by Pop and Party? It's like their best song. No. Anyway. <laughs> it, um, it's like their best song. And if I you're going to run this card, like... hard, that's okay. I still think it's bad because I think this whole combo is bad. Double Rainbow's good. This card bad. 
I just don't think it's worthwhile. I think there are better cards. I'll, I'll than... give it a C minus in double rainbow deck. There, there if, are. If you're, if you're a true pop and party fan and love so that like, song, effectively, like I do, right? What's the then... difference? Carmen, go ahead. No, effectively, what's the difference between sixteen? Because we miscalculated. What's the difference between sixteen and fifteen? Because it's thirteen five on its own. A normal level assist would put these to fifteen. What's the difference between fifteen and sixteen as a more generally usable level assist, especially in blue, where you have access to like global level assist? Oh, that's Marissa. a good point. Carmen. Yeah, that's it's a just good, like that's a good there, point. There's literally like no like verifiable difference, especially because this is so specific. Like, there's just no reason to run it. Yeah. I'm giving still, it a D plus still, only still, because Still listen it to that is... song, Carmen. It'll change your, it'll change your opinion of Pop and Party. I'm going to give it a D plus only. I already like Pop and Party. It's, all, <laughs> it's, only, because, it's only a D plus <laughs> because it is so unbelievably specific. Like, you know, like... Ugh. All right. Let's just go to the next I one. don't know. That seems like a really underrated combo to me, that trial deck combo. That's, like, Mondo efficient. Yeah, it's, like, probably okay. But you have better things to do in Bang Dream. All right, this fucking vanilla. We got. We ain't got no fucking time for vanillas. Give it the... Throw some Ds on that and move on. It's an F. It's Lisa. She wants it anyway. Next. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> dude. I'll do this Andy. one. Is All it? Right, Carmen. Yeah, the, the vanillas don't count. Relaxing with friends, Ako Utagawa. Uh, if there are no markers underneath this card, this card gets minus forty five hundred power. Uh, and when you play this on the stage from your hand, you put a crystal song, which is the Trow deck level one combo that we all love, the Maguro, and you put it face up underneath this card as a marker. Uh, Robots. So in terms of like these two one marker ten k, this is pretty good because it's tied to a really good card. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially in the English yeah. meta. Like, this could easily take the place of an oversize. It's aggressively costed. It's a card you run anyway. If you need blue fill and you're running, like, you have enough space to, like, run the Lisa to top check three to get into your shit instead of running Tanabata pair, this is totally okay in your early play spot because there's no way this card isn't in your fucking waiting room, even over refresh, right? Yeah. Like, there's no way one of these isn't in your fucking waiting room. You have to be a fucking mongoloid to whiff this. <laughs> like, you you have to be stupid to whiff this. Like, I don't want to be mean, but you have to be dumb. If you're only only Konosuba players would miss it. Yeah, only Konosuba <laughs> players. Like, I I I'm gonna I'm C plus. Like, it it I think this is totally okay. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> The the I think the one from fucking what's it called was spooky enough review, the one that markers itself. This is even dumber than markering well, itself. Hold up. hold up, the one from review is a two one two soul. Mm. This one this one's this a lot easier to achieve soul, the condition. Yeah. This is a lot more useful, but it's not less a two powerful. soul. Yeah, you're right. I did not notice that. It, I assumed it was a two soul because it was a similar profile. Still I, not... two two one ten k with a freaking dish. Yeah, if you're running the combo, strongly consider splashing this card if you don't have a stronger option and you don't need, like, draw and shit. Even if, like, a one or two of them, I mean, it could still be a nice yeah, little... Yeah, if you're already running nice the combo, why not? Like, yeah. it, it, 2 one 10 k just, like, if you're running the cop... <laughs> if you're running the combo, practically no condition, it's pretty strong. All right. Next. Is this me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, this is a really pretty card. I really like the uh, art on this. This is like really a lot of yeah. pastels, a lot of. It's really it's unfortunate. Like it. All these like off band pairing cards like have really cool art, but then are probably unusable. But go well, ahead, read the card. Let, let's see. Let's see what it does. If you have one or less characters, with you need a Saya or a Hina to play it. You can choose a card. In your level and a music character in your waiting room and exchange them. Choose one of your characters. That character gets 2k until end of turn. It's a backup, by the way. Oh, it's a backup. Okay. So it works with Sayos or Hinas. This could be this could be useful in the uh pastel palette deck to uh change your level around. So at the end of the day. Oh, I, I get I get the point of this card. Okay, I get it. Yeah. So it, it can either work in Roselia or Pastel Palettes. In mm -hmm. Pastel Palettes, you get to fix your color in your level. 
in Rosalia, you get to get that Yukina well, in your Well, it can experience. work in any deck where you're running Sayo or Hina. It doesn't need to... Wait, if you have one or less, so you need two. You need two Sayos or Hinas. You oh, have to have on. two. What yeah, is yeah, with yeah, all yeah. these fucking events being like yeah, almost playable? Yeah, like, right? So, at the end of the day, the reason why this card is, spoiler alert, an F is because there is a 2k costless Yukina backup in the same color um, that has none of these dumbass fucking restrictions. And changing one card in your level and one music character in your waiting room is like a completely worthless effect in Bang Dream. Um, it could have been cool if it was like what I was saying, like if yeah. you had one of them, but having to be so yeah. heavily invested... Uh, the second I realized it's both. one or less, you need to have two Sayos or Hinas, which like, in terms of like cards that are good and cards that you'll have, if you're a budget player, you might have the Twin Problems engine, so you have ways to like do this but it's hey hey, hey shitty. don't don't knock the twin problems yeah, no 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 twin problems engine is good yeah the twin problems engine is dumb as fuck for especially for any budget build like it's such a fucking strong card on its own because it's basically like just free play two two with on like a, that's like a really good tempo play actually i think that card's like it's very underrated yeah good build yeah but, like, there's just no reason to run this over the fucking 2k Yukina backup in the same fucking color. Like, I just don't understand. This is worse than the 2k backup. Like, 99 times out of 100. I would say 9 times out of 10, but I cannot think of a time in Bang Dream where I would want to swap my level. Ever. Ever. Like, what is this? Fucking, fucking Milky? Like, I just don't, I don't get why you would do that. Like, I don't get why you would do that in Bang Dream ever. It's just worse. Objectively worse. Let's just move on to the last card. Lisa-like lyrics. To use your event, uh, put it in memory. Beginning of your attack phase, if this card is in memory, you put it in your waiting room. Choose one of your characters, give it plus X power to end the turn. And that character... And the character facing that character get the following ability to end the turn. When the battle opponent facing this card becomes reversed, choose one character in the waiting room and return it to your hand. X is equal to the number of time X's in the waiting room times a thousand. So it reverse this is reverse something at any cost. Is that is that basically what I'm re am I reading that correctly? It's fucking complicated, I'm not at sure. The begin oh, well, at the beginning of your attack. So this goes to your memory and then when you hit your attack phase the effect fires off. X, yeah. power, opponent X gets is equal to, to the number of climax in your waiting room times eight times a thousand. So if your opponent wins combat, if your opponent wins combat after you play this, like via backup or something, they get to salvage. Yes. So what you're saying is, you play this card, and you're you're looking your opponent dead in the face and saying, "I will fucking reverse you." <laughs> Um, yeah, and if you don't, you lose. <laughs> you lose the game. Like you paid one to plus your you you played a card to plus your opponent one. If yes. you lose combat, your opponent's not winning that fucking combat. You're giving somewhere in the range of four to eight thousand power, probably. Yeah, but why? But why, Andy? Why? <laughs> like, I'll tell you why, Carmen. Because. This card goes to your memory, so it doesn't. You can like you, you, you can like re, you can like play this, then brainstorm, and then oh yeah, look at that no, cool goes, memory it, compression. It's not because it goes to your memory. It goes to your waiting room the second. Yeah, but that's effect. after the attack phase. So no, no, no. no. Have... Listen, listen. At the beginning of your attack phase, if this card is in your memory, put it into your waiting room. Note that there is no may on this effect. The second you play this card, the turn that you play it. It will go to your waiting room. God, you sound like such a Konosuba player right now. You do now. not get Just, to... You don't you, you get to deny it! Okay, okay, Carmen. You have four cards in your deck. You play this during your main phase, then you brainstorm. Boom. Compression. For one. Do you know what else compresses for you for one? For zero, because it's free, and you, then you win you combat. You know what compresses you for one? Actually, no, you don't win combat. Do you know what compresses you? Uh... Do you know what compresses you? X is equal... No, no, this gives power... I'm going to name a card that compresses you. Until end of turn. Just saw so, those. Level 0. Compresses a card off the top of your deck. It's also free. It's a level 0. 
Dude, god damn it, listen to me. It's I would rather cool. I would rather crash that car. This is memory compression. The power virus. counts before you refresh. It counts the power when you play this event. So like let's say you have a couple cards left in deck, you play this. That's one free card of compression. You are 8, reaching, power or something. reaching. This card sucks. The fact that you can't choose to leave it in memory kills this for me. Anything about this card. Because the, the beginning of the attack phase on the turn you play it, because it's not a backup, it goes to your... They can't, they can't go around printing event... They can't go around printing free cards that you can choose to leave in memory. That's... <laughs> they That's can't do totally that. That's totally a thing they can do. That is totally a thing they can do and have done. <laughs> That's like some 2025 shit. It is not know, some five 2025 years from now, shit. I'm pretty, some fucking I am pretty sure like Angel that. Beats does that. Yeah, I'm... Angel Beats sucks, though. Sorry, Brett. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. This card sucks. This is bad. This is really fucking bad. It's an event. You can't grab it. Like, there are... there, Dude, Shima Kai's exist. There are cards that on attack just give power to stuff. You for free get a hit over something and then salvage something back. And That's there are cards that a... for free swing into an open lane and give something power based on the number of things on your field. And this card is objectively worse than them because it's an event. F minus this card fucking blows. That's, I see. That's a that's a wee bit harsh, my friend. I'd give it a I'd give it a D. It's bad but playable. The best part about this card is the art, like most of these bad cards. Can't knock Bang Dream Art. It's very good. All right, is that it for blue? Is that all we got? Yep. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, we want to thank you for like sticking through us, sticking with us through this whole um, set review. Um, we tried to get this one out like as quickly as possible, so we hope there aren't any like quality issues with the uh, recordings and stuff like that. We tried to move as quickly as we could, make sure we get this stuff out to you guys as you guys are brewing all your decks and getting everything ready for upcoming regionals. Speaking of regionals, like we said, we are going to be at Toronto. Uh, Everyone in this call, so me, Zach, Andy, uh, are going to be at Toronto, as well as uh, Brian, which you've heard on some of our other podcasts, and Brandon, who you have heard on some of our, one of our other podcasts, um, Red for Bunny Girl, uh, he was on there. Um, so if you guys are in Toronto uh, for that event, please hit us up, we will be there. Um, let's fucking party, let's grab some beers, let's do it all, let's do it up. Uh, it's going to be a good time. It'll be like uh, some of our group's first times being in Canada, right? So it's going to be pretty sick. Uh, we're very excited to compete and uh, see you guys there. So uh, please hit us also, up. Also, for all you deck brewers out there in the lovely Bang Dream set, we also are going to be submitting and putting out a video for a mono band deck list. Yeah, we're going to try to look forward to that too. Yeah, we're going to try to get those out as quickly as we can. There's a lot of uh, like scheduling and stuff we're playing around, but we're going to try to get those out uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we want to record those um, quickly and get those out, Cause especially because, like, what, like, band leagues at Chara Expo? I think Chara Expo is um, December. I, I can never keep track of when Chara Expo is, but that's going to be the English official band, le band league format. So we want to get those out before then. Um, but yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, do we have anything else? Any announcements? Stuff like that? No, I think that's it. I think we covered it all. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. As always, have a great night, guys.